Hey everybody, I'm Michelle Cornish, Profit Coach, helping you be more profitable in business and in life. And here on my Facebook page, I like to interview people who are enjoying a profitable life by living their dreams. So today I am talking with author Mark Reynolds. Mark is the author of Chasing the Northern Light. Welcome, Mark. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Thank I'm you for good. having me. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. So, Mark, when did you uh, first realize that you had the dream of publishing your writing? There was a, a couple of weeks ago, I told a story um, when I was doing a giveaway for Chasing the Northern Light. Um, when I was growing up, when I was a smaller, you know, when I was a smaller kid, I wasn't very athletically inclined. Um, you know, much of, of what I was doing was geared toward English and reading and stuff like that, obviously. So I had, I had a teacher who was uh, very, very good in instruction and encouragement and things like that. So after I had gotten some, you know, after I had gotten the classes and stuff and we were doing there, I actually, one of the later classes I went to was science class. And I think it must have been like fourth or fifth grade, somewhere in there. And the first part of that class involved us telling or writing a one-page story on how the Great Bear got into the sky or the, or the, the, uh, the, the, the Big Dipper. How did that come about? So we had to write this one-page story down in as much detail as we could. And here's this shy kid who wrote it down. And the teacher wanted to go around. She picked out a few people to read. And, of course, one of the individuals that got picked to read was me. I stood up read the story and there was a, there was a moment of silence. The teacher was drawn, like, I think her mouth was open like this. If I recall, um, that was where that's 40 years ago. So, <laughs> so it's a ways, but she said, I would love for you to read that story again. Could you please? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So I read the story the second time through, I got a standing ovation from the class and you, you can't imagine what that does to a, 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 a nine-year-old boy, 10-year-old boy who's going through all these things about trying to fit in with other nine and 10-year-olds. I went back to the teacher, told her what happened, and I said, from this point on, I am going to write a book, and I am going to make sure you have a copy of that book when it's done. And 40 years later, I was able to make good on that promise. So to answer your question, it was then. It was at that point, all these things come together as a child, you know, for me. So, yeah, I love, yeah, I love that story. I heard that story on your blog talk radio interview. And I, I was hoping that you would actually share that today because I love that story. And teachers are so great for bringing out the best in kids. And that's, I think yeah. that's just awesome that you got to give her a copy of your book and made yeah. good on that. Yeah. She's, well, a lot of it started, I mean, in the, in, the, in the library, the school libraries, because, you know, when you go in there and you start looking, I was, the first book I ever read was a book called You Will Go to the Moon, which had this sense of adventure to it, and then I moved on to Encyclopedia Brown, and I just loved Encyclopedia Brown and the Hardy Boys and all that stuff, mm -hmm. so, so the idea and the, the feel good to read came in that period, but as far as actually deciding, I think I'd like to try and write stories and write books. It came at that one moment. Yeah. And how about, so for the, the idea for the story for Chasing the Northern Light, when did you first have that idea? In 2003, I read an article in Rolling Stone um, from a writer named Gregory Freeman. And in that article was, or I'm, yeah, in that, in that particular issue was an article called Chasing Death. And the, st the article revolved around people who would uh, purposely look to get the AIDS virus, HIV, which, you know, I thought, well, that's a little reckless. Why is that going on? And then he went through and he described all the circumstances and why would anybody would purposely do that? And so I thought, I didn't want to go down that road, but I thought there, there's something intriguing to that. You know, what if there was something that would make somebody want to do that? You know, what if there was some benefit, you know, to, to being that reckless? So flash forward years later, I'm watching a lot of the X Games, um, <laughs> I don't know, five or six years later, 
And all of a sudden, the character of Carter Boy just kind of came together. I started remembering that particular uh, that particular article, and the story just at that point, for lack of a tough, better term, just blew up. I mean, everything just came to me at that point. You know, the the the, the who Car who Carter is as a character, the circumstances around him, why he would be so willing to put his life on the line just to catch this you know this virus. Um, you know, obviously, if you've read the book, the book and the, he's that's the idea of him doing what he does in the story is to catch this virus, which has been dubbed the Northern Light, and it's supposed to while it may kill you. It also gives you these psychic properties that will put you on a better path toward being yourself. It may or it may not kill you, but being that this is probably the very last extreme sport that he wants to try, it's a no-brainer, you know? So there's all these things that are involved around him doing this. Yeah, it's such a novel concept, too, that catching a virus as a, as a new extreme sport, but... I like that. And that was one thing that intrigued me about the book and why I wanted to read it. And also knowing um, you from the group that we're in together and some of your tidbits of writing there, I just, I just had a feeling it was going to be a good book. <laughs> um, and it's a pretty substantial book too. So it's um, what, about 550 pages, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of backstory, but it, you know, I don't feel that the backstory that's included takes away from the front story as the reader reads it. There's a lot of things that, that go along in the backstory, I think is, uh, puts itself in the, it puts itself to the reader at appropriate times, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how long did it take you to complete the book? Um, writing probably, probably three and a half to four years. And a lot of that was because, you know, there's so many, th there's so many factors that play into that when you're a novel novice writer you know you have self-doubt life things are getting in the way all kinds of things so when I finally did end up buckling down and and getting to it you know I think I started it uh must have been about 2005 or six and then it took me about three three and a half years to finish it so okay. just because of everything that was that I mean that was involved that involved research and that involved, you know, developing the characters and the backstory and whatnot to make it feel like a complete and total uh, world, you know, so. Right. So with the backstory and the various subplots that you have going on and all your characters too, um, how did you keep track of all your characters and all the backstory and subplots and everything? It was quite, um, it was quite outlined from the beginning. I knew it was going to be something. I could actually have made it two stories I didn't want to do that because I wanted it to be, um, I, I didn't think that it was something that would have droned on and on and on because I think a lot of the action sequences that are in it, I think a lot of the reflection that the characters do involves the reader into, you know, in, into what the characters are feeling and thinking and moving forward in, in their decision making. Um, good guys and the bad guys, even, you know, all of them, all the way around, it's got to be that way. Um, so I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So it sounds like you had a really good outline and you're able to keep yeah. going back to that and keeping track of everything. And, yeah. yeah. And, and obviously as you go through the process, that's going to change. You know, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, things that you, you write and then you throw out and you pitch it out or, uh, you know, or it was almost like, I almost kind of looked at it. It's like, well, it's not really one big writing project. It was, I think there was like 54, 55 chapters in there. It was like 54 of them. So I obviously, once I got to understanding exactly who I wanted to have in there, what I wanted them to do and accomplish, it, then it became easy. So yeah, it was definitely, definitely an outline. I know there's two different types of writers. There are, there are pantsers, people that go by the seat of their pants <laughs> and there are planners. And, and I think I'm a planner. So yeah, I, I couldn't have done the story any other way. Yeah, I think so too. There's a lot going on in there and it, and it makes for a really good, really interesting story. And that, yeah. that's why I was curious how you kept track of everything for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely planning, definitely planning, yeah. definitely going back and, and making sure there was a, you know, obviously when you're getting involved with the story that it is the way it is, there's, there's uh, so much area for inconsistency. So mm -hmm. it took 
quite a bit of time to go back and I think I reread it four and five different times just to make sure that, you know, everything that I had established in chapter one or two or three or four was consistent with any of the occurrences that took place in and through chapter 40, 45, 46, that idea. Right. Yeah. And did you know from the beginning that you were going to self-publish or were you hoping that you could go the traditional route? Tried to go traditional um, uh, to begin with. Uh, didn't have luck and actually became aware of self-publishing as late as 2014. I didn't, I didn't expect that, um, you know, to, to be able to come across something like that. And then once that came to my attention, I'm, I'm thinking it's, it, it, it there, it was imp there was really an impurity about it insofar as I would really love to see this book in print. You know, I would really love to make sure that, you know, it's something that it's to the best of my ability, you know, all the I's are, are dotted, T's are crossed, whatnot. And really it was something that I put out for family and close friends as well. You know, I wanted to do that. And then I got, well, thinking if there's, if there's something that I can do, then I can reach out to people who, uh, who aren't familiar with me and may want to see my, uh, catch up on the story just because of what's involved with it, then going an indie route would have been probably the best way at that point, you know, other than just keeping it to myself. But, you know, I mean, I did go through the traditional, um, uh, methods of trying to get a, a an agent it's as you know it's very very difficult to do that so mm -hmm. uh, so it ended up being a, it ended up being an indie work yeah yeah I like what you say about the book so that the actual physical book I, I'm one of those people that feels like there's nothing like holding an actual book in your head yeah. <laughs> um, so I didn't start reading on the Kindle until just this year actually and it was mostly because there's so many books available that way that you can't get in print um, but yeah, there's just no substitute for that that book that you hold in your hands. No way. Yeah, absolutely agree with you on that. But I, I I think also that it doesn't. I had an opportunity to go to a writers conference once, and at the dinner section that was there, that was actually part of the conversation because e-readers and things were starting to become really really big. They're really popular, mm -hmm. and they were trying to convince us as writers that you know what do you what is your what is your opinion of of kindles and and nooks and, and things like that as opposed to a traditional uh a traditional published book and i think many many to most people will agree there's nothing like getting the smell and feel of a book in your hands but as a writer it's very important to realize that no matter what the tool is no matter how you're delivering your job as a writer is always going to be the same it has been since charles dickens it goes all the way straight through. So it's great that there's Kindles. It's great that there's traditional books. But I think as a, as a writer, our jobs are never, ever going to change. We have to follow, you know, those certain sets of rules. You know, we have to be able to make sure we're doing the best that we can to get out the story and the words that we want to. And no matter how you read it, a book is a book is a book, period. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point, Hugh. So was it a fellow author that actually told you about self-publishing or how did you find out that that tool was available? Just, just by perusing on Kindle, really. I, I mean, I was during a course of, of, I've had the Kindle, you know, well, it, Chase of the Northern Light first became available as a published work in October of 2014 as a Kindle book. And prior to that time, I was just, had purchased one myself, had just purchased, let's see, saw what the difference is. Uh, notice that I actually read a little bit quicker and retained with the Kindles um, mm -hmm. and just saw that I just came across some works that uh, were showing as being, you know, independently published. And I went, wow, you know, why, why didn't I just do this with Chasing the Northern Light? And then just went from there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So with Chasing the Northern Light, do you have a favorite character? I'm sure they all probably have a special place being that you created them all. <laughs> Um, I think probably Hope, who is the child in the backstory, and I think the reason for that is she's the catalyst of this entire goofiness that's going on within the world of this book. Number one. Number two is that there isn't, while you get her story and you get a sense of who she is, you're, I, I think you feel more intrigued to find out more about her. So there is a huge opportunity for me to explore 
the time between when the backstory takes place and when the main story takes place. And if it wasn't for her being the way she is and doing what she does and experiencing the things that she does, I think this whole world that comes apart in, in Carter's and the main character wouldn't have occurred at all. And, and so I'm looking forward to finding out and discovering and writing about her just a little bit more. So. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm looking forward to reading that too. Then. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was going to say she's, uh, she's quite a special little girl. And, and um, I knew when the book, The Passage, come out. I don't know if you if you're familiar with Justin Cronin in the passage. No. Um, it's he's a uh, again that's a story that came out in 2007 or eight somewhere in there. Um, the central figure in that story is a is a very special little girl too. So I knew when that book got published that I was on to something right. I was on to something correct. I thought, okay, he he goes in his book. He goes into a little more detail, but. Um, you know, with his character, but I thought it's great that there's somebody like that that's out there with a character like her, because that means I'm on the right track. I'm doing something correct, you know, and so just to work on that, uh, discover what I can discover more about her and go from there really is the only way. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That's exciting. So um, are any of your characters based on people that you know in real life? No, no, nobody. There is, there is a section in the book where Carter has a dream um, that he speaks to his father over the phone, who he's estranged from, um, that is based on a personal experience that I had. Um, but none of the conditions surrounding his relationship with his father or anywhere close to similar to what I had, but I did want to involve at least that part of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but to answer your question, no, there, there isn't really anyone, there isn't really any one person that strikes me as, Oh, you know, uh, you know, a character, a B character is based on, on him or her, you know, nothing mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps later, you know, perhaps further down the road when I start, uh, working on some different things, then I'll be able to, you know, go from my experience as a child until now and say, hey, that person reminds me of the character that I'm writing about now. But uh, for this particular work, no. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, writing some more about hope. What else is on your plan for upcoming works? <laughs> well, I have a sequel to Chasing the Northern Light uh, planned. Um, I have another piece, uh, I have another book coming out, uh, or uh, actually it's outlined right now. It's, it's my, it's, a. am um, I'm hoping to start work on that again after, uh, the new years. Um, I have a book of short stories that I have planned. So I have little pieces here and there, and then I'm hoping maybe in the summer I'm going to have. Uh, an opportunity to start a screenplay and that will be a first time ever so I'm so psyched about that I can't wait to, to, to I have a book of of uh, screen well teleplays that Aaron Sorkin did I'm a huge fan of Aaron Sorkin's writing I love him mm -hmm. and he featured six um, teleplays from the West Wing um, just kind of as a a clinic really on how to write or, or how to do, and they're just, they're perfect. So, um, so I'm looking forward to doing that just because it's a very first time experience, you know? So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's exciting. I can't wait yeah. to see what, come, yeah. what you have coming out. Yeah. That's great. I'm glad. Yeah. So anybody that wants to read chasing the Northern light, they can get the Kindle version on Amazon Correct. and where else can they find it? They can find it on uh, a website called thebookpatch.com. Um, it works just like Amazon. It's the same thing. Um, you go in there. You go to the menu in the space that's provided for bookstore. You click search, and there will be a space that will come up. You just type in there, Chasing the Northern Light, and it will, uh, you know, you can go through and make the purchase through 
uh, as you would any normal Amazon. It's very simple. It's very simple. Awesome. That's for the that's for the printed version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the printed one that for those of us that like to have that book in our hands yeah. and smell that the pages and everything. So yeah. I'll okay, I'll share the links below the video for both Amazon and the book patch. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being my special guest this week. And um, anybody that's watching and they want to learn more, I'll be sharing different things from Mark throughout the week. And I also want to thank you, Mark, for opening my eyes to uh, different genres. I have to say that Chasing the Northern Light um, fits into a genre that I probably would not have read had I not known you before hearing about the book. And right. I, yeah, I'm so glad that I um, read it because it, it's awesome. I love it. Like, I, yeah, um, I'm not quite done, but I am enjoying it. And there's always twists and turns and uh, cliffhangers and the chapters. And yeah, it's so great. So thank you so much for that. You're welcome. I wanted to, if I could, share just one brief little story. And this would be, you know, really directed at, at really anybody that has uh, uh, doubts about uh, 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 your art or, or if you're even starting your business or anything like that. One of the one of the one of the things that I wanted to do was find out how a book signing was and, and what occurred. And so one of the local writers um, who was doing a book signing at um, uh, Barnes and Noble here, who was known on a national level. Her name is Lisa Scottolini, who's very engaging. I love her. You may have heard of her. She was doing a signing, and I'd never been to one before, and I wanted to go to one just to see what it was like. And of course, upstairs the audience, she had hundreds of chairs that were set out. She went through the stories of the characters, and at the end of that, she wanted to do a, you know, a, a signing a meet and greet. And I told her, you know, people were asking her questions about her characters. When it came time for me to ask a question, I said, what do you do about writer's block? Or what do you do about this? Or what do you do about that? And she knew that I was a writer, obviously, right away. And she asked, and this was with Chasing the Northern Line. She goes, is it, is it something that's ready right now? And I said, yeah, absolutely it is. And she's like, well, send it to me. And I went, wow. She goes, send it to my agent. I'll, I'll send it out and see what goes from there. And I got home and I chickened out. I didn't send it to her. And I felt so bad about that. Now, flash forward to a couple of years later, I went to another signing. I said, remember me from a couple of years ago? And she said, yes, I do. She, I said, does the offer still exist? And she says, yes, it does. So I sent it to her agent, got the nerve up to do it. Um, her agent ultimately passed on it, which is okay because it wasn't in the genre she was saying. But the point of all that is that if you have something that you believe in, if you have a product, if you have a story or an idea, and it's something that you want to get out to people, absolutely take advantage of it if you can. Get it to them. Believe that you can do it. Believe that it's something that's going to make the best money for yourself, the best you know, feelings for yourself and, and just add something to somebody's world. If it's all possible, don't doubt yourself, do it. That is great advice. And I think that's something, especially for people who are creating anything really that um, self doubt is uh, probably our worst enemy. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Really great advice. So thanks again so much for Thank being here yourself. and allowing me to ask you some questions. I appreciate being your guest. This has been awesome. Thank you so very much. Oh, you're welcome. And remember, you guys can get Mark's book from Amazon and also the book patch, and you can check out the links below this video. All right. Talk to you Bye later. <laughs>